What's up guys and gals, welcome back to Unrest, my name is Splattercad, we are here today slithering on by through the palace courtyards to go talk to a few more people before we meet up with the king and the queen to set up this trade treaty between the Naga Empire and the city of Bimra, which is slowly starving to death because they're having a cray cray drought right now. Oh, there it is. Warm greetings. My name is Kanika, and I am the priestess and advisor to the royal family. I have been asked to offer you apologies for their lateness. Not at all, I understand. I mean, what are you gonna do? You're in the presence of kings here. I mean, they could just be like, meh, off with his head. I mean, it could happen. Weirder things have happened over the course of history. It's not outside the ordinary. I have to admit, I'm a little more comfortable with face-to-face -face talks than formal political meetings. If you're finished with all of your business, here I'd like to talk with you about a few things before the treaty signing is underway. Then let's talk. There were just three variants there. There's this talk, there was if we must, and there's no, where you can cross your arms and throw a hissy fit. I know there were angry mobs when you entered. There's a young priest in the temple district, a man named Ronvir, who brings bread to starving slum dwellers. Apparently he's been claiming that the Naga refugees in our slums are responsible for Bimra's continued misfortunes. As though you caused the drought just by being here, he's a lunatic and we'll bring him to heal. I'm gonna say, we can say that we appreciate the effort, that he's not the root of the problem, that everybody here hates us. Or we can say that this is troubling for our refugees and immigrants. You have to put this in the context of the time period. Like, if you're in, like, the year 1100, everybody is, like, a xenophobe back then. Everybody was terrified the guy in the next village over was gonna come and burn his house down and take his field. And so it makes sense that they would be terrified of the people next door. Because they're in a clear position of weakness right now, starving to death, and not able to provide for their own citizens. And we are in a position of dominance. And so it makes sense, given the economical climate that they would have issues along those lines. And you'll forgive me as I try to take a ragged breath right now. I don't know why my allergies have decided to wait till just this moment. They're like, no, you will not continue the storyline. Okay, well, I'm going to say this is troubling for our refugees and for the immigrants who will be arriving within the month. We're taking steps. We've hired a mercenary captain and his company to provide a per uh, Oh my god. Dyslexia attack. We've hired a mercenary captain and his company to provide a permanent defensive perimeter around the slums and prevent anyone from crossing over into the city proper, where... I see guards signaling. You should go and start negotiations now. Well, fine then. I don't like it when people finish their sentences anyways. Meh. I'll go finish my sentences elsewhere. The King! My apologies to both of you for the wait. It's been a long week. I'll say of course and give a small bow. Right. Since we're already running late, we'll just have to skip all the fun parts. No introduction, chatting, food tasting, any of the stuff that makes you want to get up in the morning and actually sign one of these things. With apologies, my king, signing this treaty is exactly why I got up this morning. Really? I wish we had a few more nobles like you. I think Vijay here is about the only man in Bimra who can ride a horse and do a decent day's work. Eh, yeah, well, that's one thing he can do that I can't. Right you are. Now, where would you like to begin? Well, we can leave it up to the king, we can discuss the terms of the contract, or the contract can wait. Let's talk about the angry mob that greeted us. Let's go with number three. We had meant to talk to you about the unfortunate anti-Naga sentiment in some parts of this city. We really do not believe it constitutes a threat. After all, the Naga refugees remaining in our slums have lived free of harms for months. Yeah, I trust that you have things under- Okay, how are you addressing the situation? It's easy for you to say it's not a threat, I remain unconvinced. How are you addressing the situation? We aren't sure exactly what the roots of the discontent are. Ignorance, I suppose, unjustified fear of Naga. But we know that the mob was the work of one priest, Ron Veer. Perhaps Kanika's already told you about him, and a lot of people listen to him. Why, we'll never know. Vijay has been speaking with him personally. Why has Vijay been talking to the leader of a rebel faction? Isn't it Vijay's duty as the vizier to rat them out and make sure that they aren't, like... That strikes me as a little, eh. Suspicious! Suspicious! And what has he learned? Well, does Ronvir have grievances we can address? Ronvir is unusual. He claims that Banka Mundi, who his, who his temple serves, has sent him a vision of how to end the drought and bring prosperity to the slums. It involves many things, but the key point is that we should shun your empire. He was not responsive to most of my attempts at negotiation. I see, so he's a problem that needs a solution. We are open to suggestions. What did you have in mind? I would put him to death for inciting an angry mob and threatening the peace. No, absolutely not. I won't execute a priest, particularly not one with a large following. I don't see why not. He's engaged in treason. Believe me, I understand your concerns. Direct action really could have made a difference not too long ago. As of now, denouncing the man and severely inconveniencing him are about all we can do. Yeah, we can say I suppose the sun will set when prosperity rises. I'm not a big fan of traitors, as you might. Snitches, traitors, all fashions of people that I have no time for. Then do that, we require this matter. Okay, frankly, that's not good enough. Direct action is required. 
Very well, we can hardly disagree, can we, my king? My queen? No, I suppose we cannot. I suppose there's just one more thing then, isn't there? Vijay, this was your idea. Do you want to explain it? You may have already heard that much of our profits from this trade exchange will go towards retaining the services of a mercenary company. They will provide a barrier between the city proper and the slums. With luck, they'll eventually be able to keep peace in the slums. We can say that we're doubtful. We don't trust mercenaries. We can say that's a sensible proposition. I suppose we'll go with a sensible proposition. The Naga immigrants will not be easy to house. We will need to clear out areas of the slums to provide housing for them, as well as some of our own city dwellers. Obviously, this means that these mercenaries are in the interest, or in your interest as well as ours, which is why we wanted to show you their effectiveness personally. It is long past time a representative of the Naga Empire met with your refugees in the slums. Currently, this is not possible. Therefore, I propose that once our mercenaries arrive, you, my wife, and myself venture out into the slums under the personal guard of these men. Naturally, you are at liberty to refuse. Yeah, I'm gonna refuse it. I'm gonna refuse it. So what you're saying is the personal mercenary company of the Vizier, who's already been talking with a traitor, wants me to go with the king and the queen out into the middle of the area, where our discontent is the highest. Nah, I think I'm good. It is important not only to meet with them, but to see the circumstances for yourself. If we are to maintain an honest relationship, this part seems crucial. No, I outright refuse. Understandable. Well, I suppose that our business for today is concluded. If you will give us a moment to confer with our scribes, we will drop the final documents. A pleasure to do business. Yeah. I... Uh, nah, I'm not down with that. Nope. Not down. Political maneuvering. I'm not trying to catch a shiv in the in the shiv in the liver. I'm not trying to play a fancy old-fashioned game of shiv a liver right now. No, thank you. Especially when there are no hospitalization techniques available. What just happened? Not that I would have gone in your place, but aren't there consequences to refusing a royal invitation? Probably, but none of them are. <laughs> but none of them are being murdered by slum dwellers. Rhea, I'm retiring. This is my last outing for me, but I don't want it to be my final outing. If you follow. What consequences? They're broken already. They have no power to inflict consequences. I'm gonna go with the first option. Probably, but none of them are being murdered by slum dwellers. Today was unpleasant, relentlessly unpleasant, for reasons I'll be examining and re-examining for weeks from now. I'm starting to reconsider everything we've accomplished here. You can say that relax, the trade agreement will go through. You can say that it was never about making laster friends or enemies, it was about coming here and making peaceful contact. And we can say, someone will go in my place if that's what you're worried about. All the niceties will be observed. That's not what I meant. I mean, I can't shake this feeling that nothing we just did matters. I feel like when they tell the story of Bimra and the Naga Empire a hundred years from now, they'll spend a breath on the on what Chitra accomplished at the party before moving onwards to the great, vast, and terrible inevitability. And I'm afraid neither of our peoples are going to do anything to prevent it. I know, I know, I'm sorry. Please, let's just gather the retinue together and go home. The deal was signed later that night. Two months later, a Naga representative would venture out with the royal family, the court spy Vijay, and a contingent of the captain Shyam's mercenaries to serve as bodyguards. Only Vijay and the mercenaries would return. Acting in the chaos, Vijay gathered support from the nobles to form a temporary ruling council with him at the head. Shyam was charged with keeping further riots at bay. Unruly, outlying farms would be managed by the recently widowed noblewoman Laxmi. Ranvir would represent the interests of the priests and the slums. To appease the Naga Empire, Rio was appointed Minister of Trade. Months passed, the temporary council failed to dissolve, whispers of foul play faded, and still the monsoons had failed to return. And so we got prudent. You'll notice that it adds extra trade along the way. And so we got disarming. Chitra doesn't mind using humor to make friends. We got cordial. Chitra knows how to be polite enough. Prudent. Chitra knows when it's best to bow out. And so, yeah, it, basically I'll tell you what happened. So if Chitra went with the outcome right there, Chitra gets murdered too. So basically I managed to save my favorite snaky friend here. And so now, where do we head in the storyline? You will find out in just a moment. The king is overthrown, murdered by his vizier, and the country is being divided up with the Naga Empire's position of power being relegated to delegation over trade. You are Tanya, a peasant 15 years old. Tanya sometimes catches a word of what's happening in the other villages, and it's never good. Merchants arrive with rumors of open revolt, only to whisper hushed warnings about spies within the population, waiting and watching for any sign of rebellion. However, Tanya's village has not seen any violence. Laxmi, the noblewoman in charge of the farmlands, has run this village personally ever since the death of her husband. Her soldiers keep one half of peace, and tradition keeps the other. In the midst of this, Tanya is about to be married. It is not a long before her, or it's not long before her future and that of her village will be decided.
There you are. Why is it you always mope off alone when Juha is busy with work? Couldn't you find anyone else to amuse yourself with instead of skittering off into some dark hole like a beetle? <laughs> we can say good morning to you as well. No wonder you and my mother get along. Or we can say I was just doing some reading. I didn't want to do it in public because I knew Mistress Laxmi was returning today. We'll do that. She's literate. That's one of the things about our character that we haven't... I mean, I'll take a look at just a moment, but in her traits, she's literate, which is rare for a peasant. It's not good for you, you know. You or Juhai, you've got such small families, you're gonna need to have lots of friends to help with little crises once you've got your own households. I've never been unfriendly to anybody. If they don't like me much, that's their problem. Yeah, I know the feeling. If you say so. Nobles, they like things real clean and simple. They like their peasants to do what they're supposed to do, when they're supposed to do it, without any fuss. Because when things are bad, and they have been plenty bad lately, they like knowing that some little thing isn't going to be the fire that burns their fields to the ground. When it comes to keeping us right, they aren't too subtle. You know, your parents wanted to talk to you. I think they've been looking for you all morning. We can say that that's never good news. We can say that I better go speak with them. They only talk to me when it's important. Or you can say that like you don't know why, didn't you ask? They said they wanted to tell you first, but I think we can both guess what this is going to be about. Go on, Tanya. Don't keep them waiting. And so now we are in control of Tanya. In our inventory, we find ourselves with an old wooden elephant, earrings, a handful of royal coins, an old battered icon of Banca Mundi, the protector of livestock. We've also got our journal. We've got our traits here. So Tanya has never had many friends. Juhai is one of the few people that Tanya has ever been truly comfortable around. So she's a, or a loner. I almost said a lawyer. She's definitely not a lawyer. If she was a lawyer, we'd expect a whole new level of conniving to take place. Tanya is a gifted, rational thinker. She's also literate, which is unusual for a peasant. And she's an only child. She grew up without any siblings. There have been times in her life where she has felt strangely alone. Let's go talk to our parents in the house and figure out what they've got to say. Tanya, there you are. We've got good news. Wonderful news, in fact. I know you weren't really looking forward to this day, but I think we've done about as well as any parents could. I'm listening. We've arranged for you to marry Hanu, the merchant cast boy. If all goes well and Hanu comes into his heritage, you will one day be a merchant's wife. His family agreed to marry their son to a peasant, and everyone's happy about this? Their family is quite happy. We'll say no more about it. We've arranged things with the parents today. We'll be taking our dowry out of Laxmi's vaults and presenting it tomorrow. Between now and then, we'd like you to go to Hanu and talk things over with him. Tell me when you've done this so that we can arrange everything else. Tanya, I know you're ready for this, and I just wanted to say that I'm proud of you. I've never regretted having you as a daughter, never for a moment. Always remember that everything we've done for you, or everything that we've done, we've done for you. Tanya, I've spoken with Hanu myself. I know he isn't the gentlest soul, nor the kindest. Don't tell anyone I said this, but the plain truth is that he's not half as smart as you are either. But a wise man once said that there's no such thing as a fair marriage, and in my eyes, there's not a single boy in this village worthy of you. At least Hanu's birth will give you opportunities. I'll be agreeable for now. I appreciate that. I know you do, and I know you made the right or we made the right decision. Ten years from now, you'll look on this marriage as the best thing that's ever happened to you. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. There's nothing more to talk about. Speak to Hanu and maybe someday you'll leave this place behind. Go on, he's your future husband. Show a little enthusiasm. Okay, and so this game, like I've said in previous episodes, takes place in a very strict middle, I suppose, middle ages in India where there's the caste settings where you've got the priests, the merchants, you've got the noble women, or the noble men and the noble women. I'm not really sure how it's all divided up, but you can't surmount these things. Whatever you're born into, you're stuck there forever. Your chances of ever going higher up are very, very calm. We've gained calm, or are very, very unlikely. We've gained calm. If Tanya thinks the most advisable course of action is to be peaceful, she will try to be peaceful. Let's have a look here and figure out who we have to speak with. There's lots of people. We can talk to Nita. So let's go ahead and throw down with Nita because I need a little bit of conversation. So I heard your parents managed to get you betrothed to Hanu. Congratulations, Tanya. You really deserve this. We can say that we don't know about that. We haven't spoken to him yet. I'm going to assume that's a compliment or thanks. I'll just say thanks because it's going to happen either way. You realize what this means, don't you? You and your children might live in the city someday. The opportunities and connections available to someone of the merchant caster, well, a hell of a lot more than my husband will ever have. I've always wanted to go to university at Taxila. Maybe once I'm married, Laxmi will let me leave. What, and leave your husband here? So what he's supposed to do? Sit around in an empty room eating other wives' scraps? If I was your husband, I wouldn't let you do that in a thousand years. Speaking of which, I've got chores to do. Congratulations again. We lost something right there, but I wasn't really looking too carefully. So I suppose Kesara, Sara, whatever will be, will be the future is ours to see and so forth. Or our futures is ours to be. I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't memorize lyrics like I used to. I used to have like a docket of quotes and lyrics and I could just spit them out. And as I've gotten older, I've noticed I've gotten dumber. I think my brain cells have just stopped caring. I'm not really sure what's happened. I've tried to whip them back into shape. They seem to have a very thick bed of calluses on their backs. The whippings do not matter. Let's talk to Juhai. Hey, guess who's done with her chores and guess who's wearing her I just watched a baby elephant die face. You okay? My family's engaged me to Hanu. What? Are you serious? I mean, I guess you should go talk with him, right? That's what your mother's gonna tell you to do. Alright, well, just come talk to me after, okay? Please? That's our best friend. Let's go ahead and bounce. We've got a killer. I mean, I like how we're making multiple uses of headgear right here. Like, our headgear is also, also our belt. That's called doubling up, and I like it. That shows a pragmatic bent to life, and that's something that I appreciate. She knows how to use it as both a hat and a belt. That's the way that you get the most out of your resources right there, ladies and gentlemen. Who else can we- Uncle. Ooh, let's go talk to Uncle. Let's go say, Uncle, what up? What's going on, Uncle? How you doing, man? Just chilling? Hanging out? Kicking it? Tanya, can you please talk to your aunt? Sometimes the two of you just understand each other better than I can, and someone needs to explain to her that now is not the time to pester Laxmi for extra food for a wedding feast. Laxmi... So, I've played the game before. Laxmi is like a hired killer. Like, she's brutal. Like, Laxmi, we really need to go talk our aunt into not doing this. Laxmi is a thug. That's basically the best way that I can describe Laxmi to you. She's a taskmaster. She's not a leader. She's the lady that comes and kills you if your fields don't yield enough crops. I'll go talk with her and see how things go. Please do. I can never get a word in edgewise when she's like this. I filled that in randomly because I saw the words swirling around and I caught it. I got ahead of it. I won. Take that, dyslexia. Let's go ahead and bounce off to the right. That was an awkward silence. <laughs> Bounce off to the right, these text-based games. These, what is this? The Stablas. Inside are the strongest, fastest horses in Bimra. You've never ridden a horse before. Well, damn. A villager, Mandeep. Mandeep glances at you dismissively over a leaf of parchment that he's holding, then returns to his work. Ah, uh, well. Is there anybody else over here that needs to be talked to? No. Let's go upwards and to the right. The Naga's cart. Anything put on here will be gone forever within a few hours. It's doubtful you could take anything back from it without the Naga noticing. Yeah. He slash she slash it is looking right at us. Eh? Just saying hello. Oh, hello. I'm sorry. This has never happened before. Humans scatter like beetles wherever I go. Only nobles like Laxmi ever speak with me on purpose, and Laxmi always keeps me waiting. Like today. Well, to be honest with you, most humans find Naga terrifying. And tell me, what do you think I'm capable of? If I were to tear you apart right where you stood, how long would I last against your village, your guards, and if I made it back to the city with human blood on my hands, how long before I was torn apart and sold to the markets in pieces? And say it made any sense. Sorry. The thing about humans is that you love warriors for leaders. The king and queen weren't warriors. They talked about trade, peace, and negotiations. The poorest and hungriest didn't want to hear that. They wanted murderers. I thought we were the poorest and hungriest. The slungs had a gang leader, Jadeep. His men were killers and enforcers. Now the slums have made his gang a militia. He reports to another murderer, Ranvir, a priest who wants the innocent Naga refugees in the slums butchered. If you want to see real human leaders, look to them. You know, I've heard rumors about how Laxmi's husband died. Lately, it seems I'm learning more about humans than I ever wanted to. Was there anything you wanted? I've nothing much to sell to you. Most of what's on my card is for Laxmi. Got anything to read? I don't traffic in books. The only things I've got are my own treaties. Here, I've already read these, and I don't know if I could stomach a second reading. Ooh, thanks. I'm not sure I could have afforded these otherwise. Is there something else that you wanted? I've nothing much to sell you. Most of what's on my card is for Laxmi. We already did that. Getting that vinyl record feeling from this thing. My father's a toy maker. Perhaps you'd like to buy some to sell in the city. I'll need to see one myself. I'll go get one. And so, we've made a trade agreement with the Naga to maybe go get some of our father's toys, bring them back, and maybe make our family a little bit of that Skrilla so that perhaps we won't be so poor in a few weeks. What else can we do here? We can go off to the right and we can meet with our aunt, we can meet with Deer. Let's go back and I wish that you could teleport. Actually, that's one thing that I really wish is that you could teleport in between the scenes, that you didn't have to walk in between all of them. That's one of the few things about this game is that there's a lot of kind of hustling in between the different sets. And I wish that you could just hit M right here and it would just store it in memory. You go BAM and you could just teleport to the person you wanted to talk to real fast. Especially if you, I mean, they could make it so you already had to be there and have to talk to the person already before you could do it again. But you're going to find a lot of situations in this game where you're walking back and forth across the entire city just trying to get a feel for the quest you need to complete. Let's go ahead and get a toy from father. Feels weird calling somebody father, I don't know. In the United States, most people call their old man dad, or I call him the old man. I don't know. 
It's because as you get older, it's like your parents become less your parents and they become more like your friends. Like the older you get, the more, I don't know, maybe that's just my family, but my parents still give me like advice in a parental way. But it seems like as I get older, they've stepped back and they've taken on more of like a, I don't know. It seems like they've taken kind of the approach of adding advice where it's wanted, but otherwise allowing me to live my adult life, which is appreciated. Your father is carving something from a block of baobab wood and seems engrossed in his work. Hmm? I always get grossed out when I have to do work, too. The Maga merchant down by the road seemed interested in your toys. Can I take one of these to show him? Oh, I see. One of those should do, then. He motions distractedly towards a small table. You take a small wooden camel from the table, his best piece so far, in your opinion. And if you're wondering how the game controls, I realize that I didn't do my standard thing that I always do in the first episode of every LP where I talk about the controls. The controls are 100% just you, like, left-clicking. That's all it is. You can play this one-handed, which can be cool, I guess, if you wanted to, like, read a book and play the game at the same time. If you've got multiple screens and you wanted to fiddle around and browse while you walk in between locations. Going back to the Naga Merchant, now we're gonna hand off the camel. I'm not sure, like, there's a lot of little events that you can do in this game, but there's no real tangible benefit to doing those events. Like, I've played for about three and a half, four hours past this point, and giving the camel to the merchant doesn't really seem to do anything for Tanya. Nonetheless, other actions really do seem to have large-scale effects on the game. And so you come to this weird place where sometimes you're like, am I wasting my time doing this quest, or is something interesting actually going to happen? Was there anything you wanted? I have the toy to show you. This is exceptional craftsmanship. Has your father considered selling these in the city? He could make a handsome profit. They're that good? The toys I played with were no finer. My family had more wealth than everyone in your village put together. Your father's gifts have been wasted here. Tell me where he is and I'll buy as many as he's got on him. I regret it will be many months before I return. I'm just gonna come out and ask. I want to take my chances in the city. Can you smuggle me in? Some advice for you, human. Sometimes all you see is the thrill of a new opportunity and the promise of a new scene and a grander lifestyle. You never know just how beautiful safety is until you've thrown it away. I'm not convinced marrying Hanu is safe at all. It's your life and your decision, but I can't take you with me. The risks are too great and the benefits are non-existent. And so we're out on our own from there. Let's go talk to a few more people. We can talk to Deer, we can talk to Auntie, and we can talk to Hanu. And I think we can squeeze in one more conversation before we're just about out of time here today. So let's go ahead and do it. Talk to Deer. The dearest trader in all the land. How have you been lately? Can't complain, no money, not a lot of food, but at least things are peaceful, nothing more important than that. Don't see you around much, your family's pretty frugal. Any chance you're here to throw a little custom my way? You could say that we're looking for travel supplies, we could be. No, not right now, perhaps later. We haven't actually gotten to the point where he's gonna be useful to us, and so we'll we'll beat along that way. I wasn't sure if I should play this blind. I, I'm always worried about playing games blind because then people get really, really mad when you screw up simple stuff. At the same time, I do think that this is a game kind of like The Walking Dead, where you could really only experience it for the first time the first time and I realize that seems like a really dumb sentence to say but I feel like it fits so I went with it I haven't played the back half of the game so basically the back half of the game will be me all experiencing things for the first time but on this front half I've got a decent feel for how things are gonna play out based on the actions that we pick and so I'm trying to do the best I can right now my name is Splattercat thank you for joining me here at the nerd castle for another episode of unrest I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode take care out there everybody and as always hi do from me to you